thermal anomalies, etc. And that's all being done offshore today in the Gulf of Mexico and other places in the world. So I think with that, we'll wrap it up with a quick dance from the arm robot, and then we're happy to answer any questions that you have. The question is, what do you feed them? The answer is energy, power, for the battery. Other than that, you don't feed them anything. Yes? Great question. So the, the question was, how much payload or how much weight can the robot carry? It's 30 pounds. So you can actually draw power from the robot system to the payloads as well. And you can configure it and even customize it. Um, you'll see here there are two metal rails and there are sliding nuts that you can actually move payloads back and forth. The robot, you basically create a bounding box and tell the robot what size of payloads on its back, and it will do a mass estimation to adjust its traction and locomotion accordingly. Yes? Uh, the question was, how long does the battery last? 90 minutes per mission. And then it needs to go back to a docking station, or you can swap the batteries in the field as well. Yes? The question is, how much do they cost? Uh, the answer is, you can come talk to us and we'll tell you more. Any other questions? Uh, question was around area classification, ATEX, intrinsic safety, so I'll cover that. The robot is not intrinsically safe, it's not ATEX. Having the robot communicate with area gas monitors and even personal gas monitors, all of which will send the robot into a full power down state if a more conservative threshold of LEL is detected. Good question. And it, yes? Great question. So the question was, how did we arrive on the, the dog-like form factor? So there's a very specific reason it's four-legged and looks like a dog, and we did take nature's best work into account. That's because the four-legged design allows the robot to go anywhere a human can go today. Stairs, catwalks, all types of terrain.
Internet from there. <laughs> and you have a LiDAR on top. The LiDAR is actually where the robot sees and it identifies where the robot is. And it is also on the body of our five cameras. Those cameras are used to understand the uh, uh, On the middle, we have our communication unit and you can also put a gas sensor on top of it. But again, it's an ICX and uh, not certified robot. So if you want to be uh, used to robot in the industry, uh, you need to get a certified robot to see one of the partners. Um, when we talk about, because everyone is asking how long does a robot work, so it depends a little bit of how much you use it, but uh, it has a battery uh, which runs about between 60 to 90 minutes, um, and you always need to go back to your docking station because then the robot needs to charge. But uh, if you have a docking station in the field and have a couple of robots which are permanent in the station, those spots. Um, they have, they sit in a kind of dog house and uh, operating all of this and uh, therefore they run about 10 hours per day um, and uh, do their continuous task uh, to collect data. Yeah. You can also let them jump, but again, for robots who don't do that. Any questions? Please meet you. Hello, uh, I came up now. Self-stable, so um, I'm going to show that. By so you can pick him. I can pick him. You're not allowed. And, um, and part of that is obviously that the robot needs to have a self-regulating behavior. So if it's getting to an unsafe situation, for example, a move for bikes, the robot immediately will to react and move um, itself. Uh, we are, like I said, we have them already deployed ten times, um, and uh, it's continuously operating by many of our customers, living on the top of the station. I would love to, put, love to show you my phone but uh, I think we still have other problems. Uh, oh no! Nice. So, I'm going to show you um, the robot standing 